Nowadays, solar panels are popping up everywhere, in the UK and for good reason. They're saving homeowners money, reducing carbon footprints, and once paid off, generating profit through selling excess electricity back to the grid. But with the UK government struggling with significant debt, are they about to start raiding your solar export piggy bank? If you've already got solar panels or you're thinking about installing them, this is a topic you definitely don't want to miss. Stick around as I dive into what the rules are right now, what could happen in the future, what it means for your solar install, and whether I would get solar panels installed again today. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. For years, homeowners in the UK have not had to pay income tax on earnings from their solar panels. That's thanks to a specific exemption outlined by the HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. According to this section 782A of the Income Tax Act 2005, there's an exemption from income tax on microgeneration if you meet certain conditions. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. Condition 1, domestic premises. The system is installed at or near domestic premises occupied by the individual. And condition 2, primarily for your own use. The individual intends that the amount of electricity generated by the microgeneration system will not significantly exceed the amount of electricity consumed in those premises. Now, HMRC goes on to define what significantly exceed means. If you don't intend to generate more than 20% above your household needs, then you're likely to be within the exemption. So if your goal is to power your home and sell just a small amount of excess electricity back to the grid through schemes like the feed-in tariffs or smart export guarantees, you're in the clear, for now. But what does that look like in practice? The most common solar installation in the UK is a 4 kilowatt peak system. According to the Energy Saving Trust, the average 4 kilowatt peak solar panel system would typically require around 10 solar panels at 400 watts each. A 4 kilowatt peak solar array could on average generate around 3,200 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. And given that Ofgem suggests a typical household uses 2,700 kilowatt hours, that falls within the 20% criteria. But in reality, it's incredibly difficult to use all of the solar energy that you generate. Imagine you've installed a typical domestic solar panel system that generates around 8 to 9 kilowatt hours of electricity per day. You'd need to have an electric vehicle or similar high consuming item to soak this all up. Let's not forget that sunshine in the UK isn't exactly consistent. You could well end up costing yourself money trying to soak up the solar that's dipped behind that cloud. Damn you clouds! And most of that solar generation will be around midday and the early afternoon when most people are at work. How much of your solar generation do you think you self-consume? According to the Microgeneration Certification Scheme, MCS self-consumption tables, households with solar arrays but without battery storage typically consume only 20-35% to of the energy they generate. The remaining energy not used by the household is exported back to the grid. This is where the Smart Export Guarantee or SEG comes in and ensures small scale low carbon generators like solar panel owners are paid for the electricity they send back to the grid. So you can see that with solar alone, even an average sized solar array will fall foul of this 20% rule. By installing a home solar battery storage system, MCS estimates that households can consume between 57-87% to of the energy produced. With a larger battery, this consumption can potentially reach 100%. But at the current time, would you want to self-consume everything you've generated? After having my first solar panel array installed in 2015 under the old FIT scheme, I spent many years trying to self-consume everything we generated, as we were getting paid for it regardless of whether we used it or not, through FIT generation and 50% deemed export payments. However, when we installed our second solar array in 2022, the FIT scheme had ended. And so we signed up to the SEG to get paid for the actual solar export we sent back to the grid. We're currently on EON's next drive tariff, which gives us 7 hours of off-peak electricity at 6.7p per kilowatt hour, and an export tariff paying us 16.5p per kilowatt hour all day. You should be able to see now why it's financially advantageous for those with solar to self-consume as little solar as they can, allowing them to export as much as possible and import their electricity off-peak to charge a home battery, electric vehicle and run whatever else possible in those cheap hours. Could the tax exemption be scrapped? Right now renewable energy incentives are designed to encourage homeowners to invest in green technology. But tax laws are always subject to change, based on government priorities. 
We've already seen this with the removal of the vehicle excise duty exemption for electric vehicles after years of free road tax. There are three big factors that can influence this introduction of microgeneration taxation. As solar panel adoption rates climb across the UK, so will the total revenue generated by export payments. In 2023-24, the UK government paid out a total of 30.7 million through SEG tariffs, a 327% increase from the 7.2 million paid out in 2022-23. If millions of households are earning money from solar export payments, it might push the government to review its tax policies. Let's face it, the government is always looking for ways to boost revenue. If economic conditions worsen or public spending increases, they might see untaxed microgeneration income as an opportunity to claw some back. Shifts in government priorities, like reducing subsidies for renewables or restructuring energy markets, could lead to changes in how domestic microgeneration income is treated. If the government were to introduce taxes on solar export payments in the future, they could potentially monitor this through several ways, including smart meters, which are capable of measuring exported electricity data accurately. Reports generated by the energy companies paying SEG could be required to report income paid to households. Homeowners themselves may be required to declare income from solar generation on their annual tax return. The MCS provides certificates for solar PV installations. These records could be used to track installations and their potential generation capacity. However, it is important to note that as of March 2025, there are no concrete plans to remove the current tax exemptions. In fact, recent government actions suggest continued support for renewable energy. Within weeks of taking office, the government approved three major solar farms, which will add a combined 1.4 gigawatt of capacity. These projects are expected to power over 400,000 homes and create thousands of jobs during construction. The UK aims to increase solar capacity from 16.9 gigawatts as of mid-2024 to 45 to 47 gigawatts by 2030 and to 70 watts by 2035 under the Clean Power 2030 Action Plan. This represents a significant expansion of solar infrastructure. The Clean Power 2030 Action Plan emphasises decarbonisation and positions renewable energy as a cornerstone of the UK's future electricity system. Solar is expected to play a critical role alongside wind and battery storage technologies. The VAT rate for energy saving materials, including solar panels, remains at 0% until March 31st, 2027. This measure significantly reduces installation costs for homeowners and businesses. So is it likely solar payments will be taxed anytime soon? I don't think so. Adding tax to solar payments will increase payback timescales and simply put people off installing solar. And recent actions indicate that the government is currently focused on encouraging solar adoption rather than inhibiting it. As we start to use more electricity in our homes through charging electric vehicles, heat pumps and battery storage to name a few, our import versus export numbers will start to balance out. Using an off-peak electricity tariff is an excellent way to do this, allowing you to import when cheapest and export as much as you can when the sun is shining. It really shouldn't put you off having solar panels or battery storage installed with what you think might happen in the future. As I've explored in recent videos, there are plenty of reasons why having solar panels installed might be one of the best decisions you make. If you're in the UK and you're looking to get solar panels and battery storage, you can get an installation quote from Octopus Energy. And if you quote our channel code 90239 to your solar specialist at any point before your final sales agreement is signed, you'll get an extra £100 off your solar installation quote. And I'll drop some further details in the video description box below. So what would your thoughts be if the government announced tax for your solar panel export payments? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to make hay while the sun shines, then you should definitely check out this video over here, where I compare the best solar and battery tariffs on offer to improve your savings and export payments. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.